I want this video to be a little bit of lighthearted fun, but knowing myself, I'll probably end up taking it way too seriously and it'll probably end up being mildly stressful. But some people say that life's all about choosing your favorite flavor of shit sandwich. So let's do this. Okay, so as I am preparing the photo um, that I decided to work with, I want to say if you hear dogs shuffling about in the background, um, I am dog sitting again. So that is what those noises are. And yeah, let's just get into it. I chose this photo because I feel like this photo could easily be like a cheap rental or it could be a first house. So the two makeovers that I'm gonna do today are a $300 makeover where we assume that I'm renting the space. And then we're gonna do a $3,000 makeover where we assume that I just bought the house and we need to uh, update it and invest a little bit. So this first one, I'm gonna start by just like kind of preparing the photo. I want to, cause this is kind of like an advanced mood board. It's not really a, like a real mock-up or like a rendering because I don't know how to do that yet. So we're just gonna kind of like play around. And I feel like this is a pretty simple way. You don't have to have Illustrator to do this. You can do this in like, word or paint if you want. All you have to do is like copy the entire photo, take bits and pieces of it, and cover things up until it's like better. <laughs> yes, I know sitting on my lap is so much fun. Yes. Yes. Okay, you can sit here. You just have to be quiet. Okay, so my strategy with this giant piece of art over here that we're gonna make for free following the somewhat tutorial-ish thing that was my very first YouTube video. My strategy with this is that the fireplace is really off-centered. The fireplace is also ugly. Therefore, I want to embrace the asymmetry of the situation and pull attention away from the fireplace by doing like a really bright statement-y sort of piece of artwork. And then my thought was we could find some, you know, free wood off of Craigslist or whatever and make a simple mantelpiece out of that just to cover it up a little bit, make it not quite as bad. Really? And then every room has to have a plant of some sort. A snake plant would be really good for up on top of the mantle because it's far away from the window and snake plants do relatively fine, supposedly, with low light. Although, honestly, I've never had any luck with snake plants. I have always killed every single snake plant I've ever owned. So if you have any tips on that, please uh, let me know. Cause I, I do like a snake plant. We're gonna assume that we're keeping the couch. We're gonna assume that we already have that. No point in trying to get a new couch on a $300 budget. Okay, and then in looking for a coffee table, I really wanted something that was stone or metal. I wanted to bring in like a harder, colder element because there's a lot of softness going on in this room already with the carpet and the wood paneling. So that's what I was hoping to find, but I really wasn't finding much. I also, honestly, I love the two candlesticks on top of the fireplace mantle, like right next to each other. Honestly, I think that's such a vibe. <laughs> um, so I just, I, I left that there. This brass and glass coffee table, it's gorgeous, um, but I feel like it really just didn't fit with the space. I felt like that coffee table in combination with the couch just still felt outdated. And obviously the goal is to make it, you know, not feel outdated. I did love this granite table, but it was $500, which is already well over our $300 budget, which means we would have no room for anything else and we would be over budget. And as much as I loved it on its own, I didn't actually love it within the context of the space. There was this like very mid-century, very mod vibes kind of coffee table, um, but I think it was kind of expensive. I don't remember exactly. I like this coffee table on its own again, but I didn't really love it in the context of the space. It still felt kind of outdated. And then I found this coffee table, which really surprised me because I really didn't think that I was gonna go for wood because there's already so much warmth in here, but I actually really loved this one and I ended up going with this one. And then I did find a couple other metal ones, but I just, I didn't like them. I 
I found a cute side table, a ceramic side table, which is a neat texture, neat element to bring into the space. And so that'll help with the like too much warmth issue that we were having. Um, and I also, you know, love a good nude figure. I really thought that I was actually gonna end up going with these drum tables because they're just so unique. And I could totally picture these being in like an architectural digest shoot, but they just weren't doing it for me. I Maybe they were too dark. Maybe there was too much going on. I don't know exactly why I wasn't feeling them, but I wasn't. I really liked the circular ceramic table. And then I wanted to look for a set of chairs to fill up the space on the other side of the couch. I ended up only finding one chair that I really liked where I would have loved two. But again, if you're working with thrifting, sometimes you kind of just gotta go with what you find and figure out a way to make it work. I was thinking of a chair like this. I think the pop of white is really refreshing in the space. Although I liked the one with the chrome legs a lot better than the one with the wood. found this Wassily, Wassily? I found this Wassily knockoff chair that it needed a new seat, but if you just find a scrap of black leather, that's your seat. I love this chair specifically because the black felt very modern. It felt like it brought it into the current time period. And then the chrome really helped with the whole warmth issue that we were having earlier. And then we needed to find some sort of light fixture for the middle of the room to replace the fan. I wasn't finding much. Like this was this was about all I found. Um, but this is very simple, very mid-century. So we'll go with it. It doesn't distract from the rest of the room. Yeah, and I love a glowing orb. I also love that the cord and the base of the lamp, the, both on the lamp itself and the ceiling, are all white so that it doesn't distract. So here is the before, and here is the after. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, let's see where we came in with our budget. So we already had the couch. We got the coffee table for $50. We got the side table, the little ceramic thing for 100. We got the um, statement chair that we had to redo the seat for, for $85. And then we got the main light fixture for 50. So drum roll, please. The grand total is $285. So we came in under budget, which is perfect. That leaves us a little bit of money for if you want to go thrifting. I would really love to see some sort of like big stone catch-all bowl in the middle of the coffee table here. I think that would be really good functionally and also aesthetically. So that would leave a little bit of room in the budget for any DIYs, going out and finding leather to fix the chair or plants, any other little styling things. I probably would have pulled the couch away from the wall a bit because it's kind of tight there. And then I, again, I would have loved to find a second one of these chairs, but these kind of pop up all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if in, you know, another month or two, you find another one and then you'll have a little bit more budget for it then. So that was my plan with this. Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised with how nice this turned out. And now moving on to the $3,000 budget. So my strategy for this one is to assume that I just bought this house. I have some money set aside 
specifically for things that will improve the space. <sighs> kind of from an investor's point of view, which I don't love, but like if you're gonna buy a house, it is a big financial investment. And more likely than not, you're not gonna live there for literally your entire life. So at some point you will need to sell it. So I think it would be wise to spend a good chunk of this money on this fireplace actually. We're gonna take out the old fireplace, cover that one up. I did not factor that into the budget, the whole like taking out a fireplace. Honestly, you could probably just cover it up with drywall and then, you know, someday, decades down the line, when someone takes tries to take out this wall, they'll find this like very old, ugly mid-century fireplace and they'll be like super excited about it. And then they'll post it on TikTok and everyone will go crazy for it. Anyways, so I found this rather expensive fireplace that honestly is gonna take up most of the budget. We've got a $3,000 budget. It's gonna take up 2,000 of that. Obviously hiring someone to install it would cost a lot of money, but you also have to follow a lot of codes. So my strategy would be to just pour through all of the local codes for wh wherever this house would be, pour through that, install it myself, and then have an inspector come and sign off on it. That would save me a ton of money. But yeah, I feel like this specific fireplace would absolutely add to the value of the home because before it was really ugly and outdated. And I feel like this specific fireplace can go with a lot of different design styles. It, you can lean into the mid-century aspect of the home. It could be a little bit more Scandinavian. It could be very like modern minimalist. It really, and like it's a fireplace. It's like a simple black fireplace. It's just really well designed. I was looking at a couple of other fireplaces, like this red one that I saw, but none of them really did it for me. And I just, I felt like that style wasn't quite the vibe here. <laughs> and then since we used most of our budget on this new fireplace, I really wanted to find a free sectional that we could reupholster. I'm also going to go with the assumption that I kind of already had fabric that I already loved to reupholster a couch with. Um, because honestly, knowing me, that's the kind of thing that I would do. If I came across a really perfect fabric that I knew I would love to reupholster a couch with someday, I would just buy it, even if I didn't have the couch to reupholster it with. So I can totally see myself having had this fabric for like two or three years already, just sitting in my storage unit, waiting to become a pretty couch. So I, yeah, I tried a couple other couches in this area and I just, I really wanted a sectional. I really wanted to have that conversation pit vibe because I feel like that just works so perfectly with the fireplace. Again, free sectionals are pretty common on Craigslist. You do have to be careful to look for structural damage, but usually it's a pretty good deal. I tried the stone coffee table in here, but it just, it, again, it wasn't, it was fine. It was good, but it wasn't really doing it for me. And also that would have eaten up a lot of our budget. So I wasn't really vibing with that. I am also um, making the assumption that I would reupholster this couch myself. I'm pretty crafty. I know how to sew. So like I could figure it out. I could just like take the existing couch cushions, take them off, make patterns and sew new cushions. Again, with the free DIY art, I, you just, you can't go wrong with it. I do end up changing the specific design later, but I do really like the long skinny art right next to the long skinny fireplace. And then we were having the opposite problem in this room where there's not enough warmth, there's not enough wood. Um, and I really wanted to bring some of that in. So I was trying to make this rattan set of coffee tables work. And I liked it, but it felt a little too contemporary for me.
And I really think that if your goal is to have it feel like a conversation pit, having a square or circular coffee table, something where the dimensions are equal rather than like a rectangle or an oval. And then we needed a chair. I was seeing a lot of these cheap Ikea chairs. I think they're the Poeng chairs. Definitely not saying that right. The Ikea chairs I think are birch. There's some sort of light colored wood and they are fabric. And then when I came across this one, this is real leather. It comes with an ottoman and it's a much nicer, warmer wood tone. It's not too dark, not too light. It's kind of just a perfect middle ground, especially for a mid-century inspired space. And then we needed to start looking for light fixtures. I wasn't sure actually if I wanted to do an overhead light in here. Um, I started looking and I really wasn't finding anything on Facebook Marketplace that I liked. I found a couple options, but they weren't, they weren't good. At one point, <laughs> I was actually in thinking of installing just like a normal cheap boob light and then DIYing something to go on top of it, but I'm glad I didn't go with that option. I did, however, find this floor lamp and there wasn't a good photo of it. So my hack for that is to just describe the thing that you're looking for into Google and then find a better picture of the same thing. It doesn't always work, especially if you find something that's super specific. But I did that for these Better Homes and Gardens sconces too, because this was the only picture they showed and they didn't show a picture of the actual sconces, just the boxes. And I wanted to put, you know, something a little nicer into our mock-up. So I found the actual picture from the actual website and I decided, this is really weird and kind of out there, but I decided to put both of these on top of each other, which again, very strange strange, but I feel like it's the vibe. And then for pendant light, I think this one would have worked really well. It was almost $300 and not quite as big as I would have hoped. So I decided against it because our budget was looking kind of tight already. And then I tried just like a normal circular one, which probably would have been cheaper, but I didn't like it as much. I think the um, elongated ovular, ovular one matched the fireplace better for sure. And then I was completely blanking on Troy Savon's name right now and I was trying to figure out his name, which is why I was on Paige's uh, YouTube channel. Um, but anyway, so I went and found this light. I couldn't find the specific light anywhere, um, but I did find the designer and some of his other lamps were going for like $16,000. So we're gonna DIY this. And then I was paused here for a second because um, a loved one called and told me that they had sprained their ankle at work and their boss told them to just power through. So um, oh, just a reminder that your company doesn't care about you at all. Anyways, side tangent. She's doing better already, it'll be fine, but um, not a fun way to spend an evening. So yeah, my plan with this is just to find some like heavy gauge wire. Sometimes you can find this for free. Um, on Craigslist, especially if you're looking out for the uh, scrap alerts, metal scrap, scrappers, anything like that. You'll probably want it to be a bit thicker than your normal coat hanger wire, but that could probably work too if necessary. I know the Sorry Girls tried to do some sort of version of this, but I imagine we could take a look at that, tweak the strategy a bit and make it a little bit better.
so yeah, the $3,000 living room is done and I should uh, probably save it. So again, this is the before and this is the after. I am really obsessed with how this turned out. At first I thought I was gonna regret my decision to spend two thirds of the budget on this new fireplace, but I think if you're gonna spend two thirds of your budget on something like this, especially when you own your own home, if you are worried about resale value at all, I think something like this is a really good place to spend it on because you'll either be bringing or selling your furniture with you when you move. The furniture isn't going to impact the price of the home. So while I'm not a big fan of thinking about resale value too much, I do think it is also good to be smart with your money and to put it where it makes sense for you to put it. And I think if this specific living room was my house that I had just purchased, then this is probably something along the lines of what I would do with it. I know the budget was getting kind of tight here, so let's add up and see where we stand. Okay, so we did 2000 for the fireplace. 75 for the chair, 300 for the coffee table, 50 for the lamps, $5 for the floor lamp. And then let's say we need probably $50 worth of materials to make this pendant lamp. And then let's say that the fabric to reupholster this couch was $300. So drum roll please. That leaves us with a grand total of $2,780 which is perfect because that means we have just over $200 left for some general styling, right? If we wanna get some pillows for the couch, if we wanna get something to go on the coffee table, and then we'll probably need some sort of side table over by that white chair. But yeah, I am super obsessed with how the space turned out. And now here's the awkward part where I have to film the outro before I've even done the makeovers. So current me has no idea how these turned out. Do future me a favor and let me know how these turned out and if there's anything you would've changed about them. And if you wanna do future me a couple of other favors, the like and subscribe button are right down there. Okay, bye.